I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum! Astral Radio Z is a horror, cult, exploitation film podcast by filmmakers, critics, musicians, journalists, and fans for the film obsessed. Here is your host, Derek Terry. Stars are in line for us to talk about Mangler movies tonight, Andrew. Yeah, Mangulito. Uh, <laughs> Mangul- Mangulita. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Pineapple mangle. Did you did you literally just watch these in a like a marathon today? Um yeah. Yeah, I so did. <laughs> Jesus, how are you still like sane or alive? Uh you know, I'm I'm cool, man. I had to um I Henrik's new movie, he also sent me a screener for that, so it's like and he always wants to know what I think right immediately. So I was like, mm, I'm in the middle of a manglethon, motherfucker. <laughs> the manglethon. Yeah, no, I wasn't shit to no, no. I I honestly I I was really excited to watch Mangler One and I watched it like really soon. Like I'd been wanting to rewatch it ever since I read that article. The Mangler Two, I was like, oh yeah, Mangler One, let's get into two. I'd never seen the sequels. And then that one took me like a couple of times and I fell asleep on both. And I finally ended up having to just do two and three like back to back today. So Amanda and I, as soon as I told her what we were doing for the podcast, we watched part one and two in a marathon session one night. Mm. And then she was like, okay, let's watch the third one. I'm like, not so fast. <laughs> let's slow that roll. Chico. We ain't going there. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's not a, it's not cool to watch. It's not fair to two to watch it after one. You should give it a little air. Like a lot, like maybe as many years as it took between those two movies. <laughs> I think it took. Let's see. I'm looking at it right now. It was seven years. That was no. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Right. Like, <laughs> what, what were they thinking? Well, they weren't thinking. I, I, as far as I know, the second one was kind of like a, a prom night to Hello, Mary Lou situation where it was a Canadian production and somebody bought the rights to the licensing of the Mangler and then decided they had this separate movie graduation day and they were going to just toss the Mangler as a title. You know, that just old school try tried and true gimmick of let's tie this movie that we have. It's a total piece of shit and try to tie it into this series. So somebody will actually spend a couple schmeckles on it, you know, but don't don't. So was the movie already made like when that when they did that or what? Yeah, it was totally already made and somebody must have come across the licensing rights and bought it out for 50 cents. When I was watching it, I was thinking that might be the case. But then I swear a couple of people say Mangler. No, the Mangler virus was what they say, right? Like, did they just dub them? Yeah, I well, I don't know. Maybe they shot <laughs> extra stuff. I have no fucking idea. But- Guys, we need to stop the Mangler virus from spreading. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the greatest thing ever if that was actually I, the case? That would be the best if it was just the guy who played the French cook overdubs all the instances, <laughs> but he tries then, to fake their voice as good as he can. The Mangler virus. <laughs> every single time. It's kind of like us using uh, uh, Video Oasis every single time. <laughs> the Mangler virus. <laughs> I think more movies need to do that. Just an arbitrary thing inside of them where all of a sudden they decide this is the word that we're going to have uh, my grandpa say <laughs> over top of everything. Oh, God, it has to be always a, a grip. No, it's my grandpa. No, it's my uncle, but in makeup as my grandpa. <laughs> like heavy, obvious makeup. So he's really trying hard at that old man voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you look... <laughs> So, well, folks, we're already recording, as you you can tell. Welcome to another episode of Astro Radio Z. You've read the title and you're scratching your head going, why? 
Why are we here about to talk about the three Mangler movies? I don't know. I can't answer this question. I have no idea how this came to be. It just happened. It's one of these fluke things that happened upon the interwebs. Uh, you know, you're you're in a discussion group. You're talking about Stephen King movies. Then all of a sudden the Mangler comes up. Then all of a sudden somebody goes, oh, this would be a great episode of Astro Radio Z. And because I have no common sense. Of course, I go, yes, let's do it. And of course, who was the first person to get a hold of me? Say, yeah, I want to do this. It's Mr. Andrew Shearer, who hasn't been on the podcast in a while. Mr. Andrew Shearer, thanks for coming back. And I'm sorry it had to be for the Mangler one, two and three. Hey, man, you know, I think we can find a miss uh, like an interesting mangle on the subject. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Well, I I hope we don't get infected with the mangler virus tonight at all. So uh, hopefully we make it through this episode without the mangler virus hitting us. So son of a bitch. That's funny. (laughs) It is. Have you ever actually watched these before? Was this the first time you ever saw these movies? Hey, I went to see the Mangler, the first one in the theater. Like I was pumped. I don't know if you remember this, but like Fangoria was hype in it. It was a big deal. It was like they were advertising it as like, you know, um, Toby Hooper directs a Stephen King, which, you know, Salem's a lot, but, you know, exactly. This, we, don't, we don't know that. It was the 90s, so we, we don't know anything. St- St- Toby Hooper, the director of Texas Chainsaw, and and uh, Stephen King, the writer of already another Possessed Machine movie. And uh, Robert England, Freddy Krueger, playing a guy that's basically Freddy Krueger in The <laughs> Mangler. And we're like, yeah, man, you know how it was around that time. It was like the year yeah. before Scream, so everything wasn't shit. And so um, I went to see it, and then I never want to see it again. Never. So not only was I not trying to fuck with The Mangler in my life, but I knew it was I fucking with two and three. So... So how did you come to want to actually revisit this and come on the podcast for this? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. There's a good reason. Uh, so Toby Hooper died this year, and this was his last, if I'm remembering correctly, this is his last like major uh, theatrical release. His mm-hmm. last movie he made, they went to theaters. Yep. So that's a, that's a thing. And uh, also, there was an article that came out about it. Um, after he died, that was like this whole like appreciation reevaluation made it sound really good. And I'm like, damn, maybe I was just really harsh on this motherfucker when I saw it. Maybe, maybe, you know, I need to watch it again. Why not? You know, I'm, I've been rewatching a lot of Toby Hooper. I rewatched Salem's Lot very recently, listened to a lot of his commentaries. So I was like, yeah, okay. I feel like I could do this. And then you're like, hey, let's do all three. And I'm like, oh shit, well, I never seen two and three. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, yeah, I decided to open my heart like that and just 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 go for it. You know, I mean, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> no, we, we will find out. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had never yeah. seen this fucking thing. I totally ignored it because it looked like a steaming pile of horseshit. It's because it has such an awful rep- a reputation, such a bad. It's circled around and now a lot of people uh, like it. I've noticed that a lot of positive reviews out there. Have you been reading a lot of kind of romanticism, like revisionist history on the Mangler and how now all of a sudden it's this underappreciated <laughs> classic? and all this I've, I've been reading all this trash online ever since toby <laughs> hooper died I, I i i read the one article but then i saw a lot of people you know just generally commenting about the mangler uh, when i was looking up um i wanted to find out how much of the movie he actually made because he was replaced or he quit or something which is a classic toby hooper move. It's not the first time he did that right you know yep um so i was i stumbled upon those while looking for that particular information which i never actually found so you don't know who it was that took over for him directing wise at the end of this when he stepped away oh no it, i know who it is it's uh, not seeing the uh the the producer or okay. the writer, or whoever it was, he's a guy that made. I just, I just want to know like how much of it he made. You know what I mean? Because I have my theories as to what might be Hoopers and what's not. You know, but I, I didn't find out why he left. Probably cocaine, and uh, <laughs> I mean that's why that's why he left all those other ones. But um, I, I, I didn't find out how, you know how much he actually shot. Yeah, you know, I think that's interesting when that happens. Well, the movie is so disjointed and all over the place that I don't know how you could even begin to know, put a finger if there's multiple directors. What is what? I mean, this isn't like Justice League where it's pretty 
easy to see what was, you know, who was Joss Whedon and who was Zack Snyder on that film. I think it's pretty easy to see the mangler before we even get into this is literally one of the most perplexing things I've ever seen in my entire life. (laughs) I mean, especially when, when it comes to like looking back on the career of Toby Hooper, who never was a person that rested on one aesthetic style. I mean, from movie to movie, he jumped genres, he jumped styles. Um, One movie was super serious and avant-garde and cinema verte. And the next movie was fantastic or a kid's movie or uh, just the weird, a comedy, the weirdest shit. He always was all over the place and he was always somebody that was willing to take chances. And this movie more than just about anything I had ever seen, I, you, you could have told me that it was, uh, Uli Lamel that had made this movie. Now I said, Oh yeah, yeah, that seems about right. I mean, <laughs> I have no idea. It, it didn't seem like a Toby Hooper movie to me whatsoever. So when I sat and after he had died, I, I kept hearing all of these people come out, you know, praising the mangler and how, what a un, un uh, misunderstood masterpiece this was and people should look back at it because it's it's truly a satire and um when i i'm like okay i've never seen this i've never seen two and three maybe it's time for me to finally watch the mangler because amanda and i after it's sad to me that you know it was Stephen King's it that drove us to like go back and start watching all of Stephen King's stuff all Mm -hmm. over again, (laughs) but, but it did. So I, we started going through all of these old TV series and old movies. We had watched the dark half. Then we watched the Langoliers and we watched the Tommy knockers and blah, 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 blah. kept going on. And I was like, okay, well, I guess this was, this is a sign we need to go and, (laughs) And, and watch the mangler yeah. and which brings us to today's episode um which i don't i don't want to let a cat out of the bag or anything but this was uh an interesting uh experience preparing for this episode <laughs> <laughs> so uh andrew uh are you yeah. ready to do this Man, yeah, man, I'm ready like like <laughs> like Popeye Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to take a short break here. We're going to listen to my buds band Northless, who just put out this amazing new record. You need to go check it out on bandcamp.com uh, forward slash Northless. You'll find it. This is a song from that record. I hope you guys enjoy it. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about Toby Hooper's 1995, whatever the fuck it is, The Mangler.
in that machine and a little bit of it in me. There was an accident today. The worst one I've ever seen. Have you considered the possibility that the machine might be haunted? That machine killed your daughter. We all have to make sacrifices. Human sacrifices. A demon is a kind of electricity. Sometimes it gets out of control. People get hurt. Three modern masters of horror have just created the ultimate machine for terror. The Mangler. So, uh, in 1995, Mr. Toby Hooper, the guy who made countless amazing classics of the genre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Invaders from Mars, Life Force, uh, Poltergeist, yada, 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 got fingered. Well, I should probably shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> he got chosen uh, to direct this Stephen King gimmick called the mangler which was a short story i believe from night shift um i could be wrong on that and i'm sure somebody will out there will tell me that i'm wrong but i'm not gonna look it up (laughs) so (laughs) so it was another one of these movies that were made in the the mid 80s to mid 90s where everyone was trying to mine all of that stephen king property for all it was worth Every short story, be it Graveyard Shift or The Night Flyer or The Mangler, because shit, you know, we needed a movie about a haunted laundry press, which is I've never fucking heard of a huge industrial sized laundry press in my life. But we'll get to that in a little while here. But we got one anyway. And this movie stars Buffalo Bill himself, Ted Levine, in one of the most insane performances I've seen in my entire life. He plays this cop who, during the course of one day, goes through the most insane adventure one cop probably has ever gone through. The story of the Mangler is a twisty, turny one, folks. It starts with a virgin that cuts her hand at this laundry press factory, this industrial laundry cleaning facility where people are yelling and screaming at all times to get to work. Hurry up, get to work. We have deadlines. I don't know why. I mean, it's, OK, anyways, um, and this new <laughs> this new employee cuts her hand and gets shocked by an ice box that gets bumbled into her by two yahoos. And she cuts her hand and spills blood all over this press. And the evil mojo from the shocking of the ice box and the blood in her hand possesses this laundry press, driving it to want to consume people. On the side, Ted Levine and his finely mulleted brother-in-law, who is obsessed with black magic in the occult, Ask strangers if they are virgins left and right and try to figure out why are people getting chewed up by this laundry press? <laughs> another side plot. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a long synopsis, folks. On another side plot, Robert England wearing insane metal leg braces and makeup to make him appear like he's 120 years old is. Uh, immortal for some reason because he feeds 16 year old virgins to the mangler for reasons and uh, all of these plots come to a head in a weird chaotic I don't know climax I guess you could call it (laughs) where where the, (laughs) the mangler press turns into this big CGI monster and runs through catacombs underneath this uh laundry press factory and uh things happen and then it just ends so um andrew (laughs) going back and revisiting this what were your general thoughts about the mangler uh you know like well first of all i didn't see anything in this movie like what the article was talking about 
with the, the great cinematography and all of that stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't see nothing. I mean, you know, they, the Mangler itself is a cool prop, right? Like it's a good set. It looks cool. But it's I was like, huge. man, this movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was very impressive. And I was glad they got a couple of good shots of that, you know, and, but, ah, oh, I just, I didn't care about like I didn't believe these two dudes would be in this friendship, you know, because Levine's uh, wife apparently had died in some kind of car accident, and so she, he's now homies with her uh, brother or her, you know what I'm saying? Like like his yeah, brother-in-law. his brother-in-law, yeah, who lives next door to him for some unknown reason. Yeah, and his brother-in-law looks like Simon Pegg dressed as Edgar Wright. It's like the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> but and I guess he's English too. Maybe it just didn't seem like. Levine's character is some like hard nosed, depressed police, you know, like a really real kind of gritty dude. He didn't seem like he'd be friends with with a guy like that. He didn't seem like he'd be friends with anybody. Nah. So I the whole time, anytime they're talking to each other, I'm like, why are y'all talking to each other, man? This is the kind of dude you'd be like, if I ever see you again, happy, I'll break your face on a table. <laughs> you know, I would never, I would never let them to. Yeah, he, he really talks like he got a lot of yeah, something. You, in his mouth you nailed that, Ted Levine. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I got there's one part man that cracked me up man when this movie like there he's supposed to be a police but there's one part where things are getting kind of intense and they're in the car together and they just see this woman walking like wandering in the road going you know looking for like help me or something like that and they just drive past her and he's like hey wasn't that good old Mrs whatever and he goes yeah and then they just fuck off and they don't even care. I'm like, aren't you the police? And then later you find some shit jumped off and he gets all upset about it. I'm like, you dumb. Anyway, I shouldn't be like all digressing about this. I just, there's so much of it that I just didn't buy. But this movie is obsessed with antacids, stomach oh. medicine. Oh my every, God. Every fuck chance they get, they got to show somebody fucking with some antacids. It's, you know what I mean? Like, who did you think is watching this movie, man? Pepto Incorporated? Yeah, at first like, I thought it, it was the old lady. I mean, it's introduced by this old lady who is the, the, the oldest employee of this machine press company. And I thought she was taking, I didn't realize it was antacids until Ted Levine started taking them or somebody had made reference to it because I was just trying to wrap my head around what the fuck was going on in the beginning why of this were they so yeah why were they so obsessed with showing it and at a certain point you go well all right so this is going to be important because they told me 80 times about this right. and they really show it so uh, it goes along with the movie's obsession with its mythology and with this guy trying to convince levine's character um that uh you know this is some possession that it's a supernatural thing and the whole time you're like you know there's bullshit reality bullshit reality I'm like all right you know okay but they just don't stop with all of it there's so much on the nose type of stuff in this movie is crazy to me that i was preoccupied with that and how like goofy over the top um robert england was as this character like how how much like freddie colonel sanders he you know what i mean oh my god that's exactly what he is in this fucking movie <laughs> It just he's so cartoonish and it doesn't match the rest. It doesn't match any you know? not one performance. The only thing that that comes to mind when it comes to performances in this movie is during 31 Days of Horror. I watched uh, Ruggiero Diodato's newest movie, Ballad and Blood, where each and every character in that film felt like they were in their own movie. Like they're none of the performances meshed. They didn't even mesh the it, the emotion that was going on in screen. It it didn't like conform to what each other or the reactions didn't conform to what the energy was coming from each person on screen. And this movie felt exactly the same way. It felt like every last person in this movie were in their own movie. Maybe that's why Hooper quit, man. Maybe the producers just, you know, they couldn't come to a decision about the tone of the film and what kind of movie they're making because, like, you want to see it as kind of, like, darkly comedic, like Texas Chainsaw 2 would be, you know? Um, and there's some things that are really f kind of funny in it and kind of satirical in it. But it's not, like, consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's too, the tone is too like sweaty and oppressive. Like the original Texas Chainsaw. I mean, there's some things that I see as Hooper's style being on here. There's some callbacks that I saw uh, mm -hmm. to his other movies, but mostly man. Yeah. It's that the, the tonal, the balance is all off. Like the whole time is all off. Yeah. Me. It doesn't make much sense. Like to me about three quarters of the way through, 
this really felt like that middle period Dario Argento, like phenomenon past where mm. he was no longer focusing that energy in one avenue, be it just the visuals. So there was some clear aesthetic happening. It was just like all of these tangential like pieces coming together arbitrarily and just being thrown at the screen and on their own, those each of those individual ideas may have been interesting at some point, but when put together, they don't gel whatsoever. And there's a weird, at least I don't know how you feel about this, but there was a point where I felt like there, I was enjoying what I was seeing because it was so bonkers and I didn't mm. know where it was going to go. And it was so goofy and over the top that you couldn't take anybody seriously in the film. Um, but because the the script and the plot is just so nonsensical and so meandery, it's hard to like grab onto anything to want to pay attention to it after a while. And yeah. it doesn't help that this thing is almost two fucking hours long. Yeah. I mean, if you cut out all of the times that Edgar Pegg, let's call him, I don't remember his character's name. Um, if you cut out all the times that he talks about um, like supernatural shit and specifically like the hand of glory and all the ingredients and stuff they need, if you cut all of that stuff out, I mean, it might be a normal length movie because there's way too much obsession over these details like that. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, it doesn't really do anything. Um, but I think part of the problem also is that Levine, he's a seriously good actor. And even when he's playing like manic or whatever, he's, he, you know, you really kind of want to believe him and you really want to believe the situation and stuff. So you're like, all right, well that would make a, any weird ass kind of plot, uh, believable when you got a guy like that. But I can't, I don't know if I really like him as a good guy either, you know? Well, he's kind of the, his direction was very strange. Like he is a really good actor, but can you really like take his character seriously when he's telling Robert England, I'll shove those crutches up your moldy ass, you clown. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like there's a lot of the stuff here that was clearly supposed to have been comedic, you know, like there's one girl, there's one where I think it's, um, Gartley's niece, Robert England's character's niece. And, um, like, she cannot not be right there when anybody's getting sucked into the mangler and gets sprayed with blood. She just magically shows up. Yeah, she's all time. Anytime somebody's, you know, run up in there, she's right there looking right at it, getting sprayed with blood. And I was like, that's funny, right? Like they had to have thought that was funny. I don't know, maybe not, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, things like that and basically everything Robert England says and does. There's one point where he's dancing around why somebody's getting sucked into it. I mean, he sounds exactly like Freddy. He does Freddy's laugh. You know what I'm saying? He does all the wisecracks. You're like, it's just a weird, it's, a, it's very bizarre. Like if, if I was going to say, watch it, it would just be to just be like, check this out. Tell me how this works. You know? Yeah. How does this work? I would not recommend anybody watch this on their own. Nah, nah. There's there's no enjoyment to be had in this film on your own. It is it is far too strange. And I'm usually and you're usually a big champion of that kind of stuff. But well, there's yeah, something I, about this that just doesn't work without somebody there to kind of look at and go, are, are you seeing the same fucking thing I'm seeing? Because well, I can't believe you know, I'm watching this. <laughs> when we talked about, and I know what you're talking about, how much I like Howling the Howling Three, right? Uh, maybe that was the end, and it's because you got one Looney Tunes uh, vision. It might be all over the place, but it's one Looney Tunes vision. What you got here in the Mangler is two different people's idea of a movie, and they're just like all smashed up together. And I believe that Hooper's movie on its own probably would have been bananas, but it would have been a lot more fun to watch. I think you know. Because he knows this is what I mean. You, it's called the Mangler, and it's by the guy that made Texas Chainsaw. He's got the gore. The gore is there. This movie has some really gnarly shit in it. I mean, you get what you pay for if you want to see a movie called The Mangler. People get mangled. They get mangled. There's a mangle, you know, like real soon. Like even James Mangled probably was like, "Damn." And, but I, I don't think that. Uh, I, I, I just it's not that that kind of good. 
Robert England's makeup, he looks like they could have just had a, a guy looks like a fucking ventriloquist puppet. Yeah, mostly. it looks terrible. And then there's this other guy, this other character who's supposed to be an old man, but he's played by a young person in old makeup. And at first I'm like, maybe Hooper was trying to do a grandpa callback, you know, like with John Dugan, remember? Yeah. Like that. But no. That character altogether perplexed me. And we're talking about JJJJ Pictureman. <laughs> he's just, it's too distracting. He's distractingly a young guy in old makeup that you cannot you you just can't pay attention. You can't pay attention, and his character does nothing for the film. You literally could excise every last section that he's in, and you wouldn't miss a thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's important to note that Christine, which is a Stephen King adaptation by John Carpenter, right, mm-hmm. about a, a possessed uh, car, that was a full novel. Am I right? Yep. The Mangler. I mean, that was probably like a few pages. No, I don't think it was any more than like 13 pages, maybe. Yeah. So when you do that, I got to pull something out of there that just isn't there and really make it into something else. I just they, they, they didn't do it right. I don't think, you know, if there was anything that you would excise from this that could possibly make it more coherent or a little more enjoyable, what would you probably put your finger on? I would take the, um, the brother-in-law character completely out. Mm -hmm. I would take him completely out because that way you would have Levine solve a actual mystery. You know, you have this guy who's had this beat down life, who's a hard nose, who's got a hair trigger and he doesn't believe in anything, even, you know, what he sees. He wants to take everything being a rational explanation, or whatever. And I cannot stand where some know-it-all comes in or some wizard or some book nerd or whatever comes in and explains stuff. And there's a part where they're going through a scrapbook and reading it out loud. And you're going, come the fuck on, Jack. Give me some. You know what I mean? Let, yeah, me, yeah. let, me, let me do this. And so if you were to take him out this guy would just be dealing with all this banana shit on his own and he would have to discover this stuff for himself and be a real detective. But instead you got like the detective, um, you know, paired up with a dude and a dude heavy movie where all the leads are dudes and all the women are basically like shrieking, uh, wallpaper, you know? And I was like, at first I was like, would it be better if Edgar Pegg was a woman? No, no. Because she would just be there for exposition. That's yeah. The women were th- were literally there as as meat for the for the mangler or as sex objects for Robert England in extremely creepy, weird scenes. That was gross, man. You know he's gonna make her stick her big toe in that neck hole thing he's got. I mean, whew. <laughs> his character just in general. Oh, I I don't know. I I really think. If I don't even know if you could do a fan cut of this movie and focus it, I just nah. you would tear the energy out of it because I do feel there is some weird, chaotic energy, surrealist energy to this film that is unique, which could be the only compliment I could really give the mangler. <laughs> is, nah, is that that's fair? Is that I at the end of the day, I looked at Amanda when we were done with it and I was just like perplexed. I'm like, that was one of the weirdest fucking things I've ever watched. Yeah. Come yeah. out of like, and, a, and that was a big release. It was. And I remember we went to see it and, you know, the early nineties post post Jurassic Park, people were fucking with CGI kind of a lot, you know, and they were using CGI in place of when they didn't need to just for the sake of it being this kind of new thing. And so, you know, if you think about like Stephen King, uh, Kubrick's adaptation of The Shining, um, and then they did that TV version that supposedly added more from the book too, it was more faithful to the book. And there's this part where, um, and this came right out of the book, where like the shrubs, like the shrub animals and stuff start walking around. And anybody who saw that TV version says, all right, you shouldn't have done it. Yep. There's some stuff that's good on a book page, but it just in a movie is dumb as fuck. And that's what broke us with the Mangler. As I recall, I thought the Mangler was all right. I thought it was fine. I was enjoying myself until this thing 
comes to life and everybody goes, oh, no, it's the antacids. Like, you're fucking, are you really? What? You, you know, thank goodness there was a payoff for all this. Um, <laughs> it just gets up and chases them around. And it looks so shit. It's terrible. It looks so bad that we in the theater were just like, get us the fuck out. And that is seriously was the story of the Mangler for me. And I would I never wanted to see it again. I was like, what garbage after all this time you made us sit here that this is the ending to this yeah. thing. You know, I mean, it chases them around like like an alien creature or whatever. And it looks real, real, real bad. Like the, the alligator in Eraser bad. I mean, it's just... Top, it's it's in top worst CGI in 90s movies for me. Right. Bad. Well, it's, it's up in that with, early era where it just was not ready for the runway. That, nine, that it should have never been. It was like Alien 3, you know, where yeah. it, now you look at it and it just sticks out like a sore thumb. And, and it was in the story. That was how Mangler ended. This thing just gets up and runs. But that's great for a short story and that's crazy and it's very satisfying and uh, f- perfect for Stephen King. But as we know, some of the things that Stephen King writes in his stories um, just are unfilmable, you know? And I feel like, oh boy, that, <laughs> it's just like, man, all right, Roger Rabbit at the end of the movie. Thank, you know, <laughs> thanks a lot. It really, they're, they're in Toontown in hell, you know? Yeah, basically. I mean, it it wasn't when you look back at it now and you watch it, it like as a, a total piece, it's not that far off from the rest of all the insanely stupid things that happen in this movie like the brother-in-law who gets chomped by an ice box and looks like he's coming he's mo- oh, 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 oh. well he's getting his arm yeah. chopped and um yeah. other other shit like ted levine screaming you miserable piece of dog fuck over and over yeah. and over again i mean it's just this movie is insane it's it's weird the best bit in this whole movie for me and the most Toby Hooper element of the entire movie to me was Robert England's death. It was when the mangler folds Robert England into a square, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, like I said, it delivers on the gore. Like the gore is fantastic. The gore is wonderful. You got a very disturbing scene where a guy runs his arm up into the thing and basically screams at his employee to chop his arm off so he can get out of it. I was like, fuck that i remember it being disturbing when i saw it in the theater and i believe fangoria ran a picture of the guy with his arm in it so i was sort of going in with that sort of anticipation slash anxiety for that you know but to me the big tooby hooper moment i felt was the old man in the makeup right before he dies he says something to levine's character who's sitting right beside him with his cocaine eyeballs about to burst out toby probably gave him some of his cocaine in that for that scene and then uh he sits up blows blood spit all over the camera and then lays back down and dies i'm like whoa and it was a wide angle shot like almost like full barrel where it's got that distortion in the edges it was a weird ass that to me was a toby hooper sort of a moment you know this movie (laughs) that that scene in particular yeah it, it, no, it's dumb. If it, I would say find the gore scenes and check those out, but the rest just don't fuck with it unless you're just a Levine purist, you know, unless you just can't wait to hear his voice constantly. Yeah, constantly yelling and his eyes bulging out like a Looney Tunes cartoon all the time. And yeah, I don't know what the fuck all those people were talking about. Looking back at, at this as some satirical masterpiece. You're full of shit. No, <laughs> whoever you are out there, you're full of shit. I'm not listening to you ever again. Because <laughs> no, the Mangler to me is not. Nah, it's a big, it's a big thumbs thumbs down. And I would only recommend it as something to goof on with a group of friends that maybe maybe you want to troll them and you want you, you want to say, hey, I got a crazy movie for you, and you put the Mangler on, and then you're you just like fade off like Homer into the bushes. Or something like that, but I I would never ever watch the Mangler again. Uh, What about you, Andrew? Nah, man, I I seriously like you know. I think I liked it more when I first saw it, and I hated it then. (laughs) So it's it's not. It wasn't a. It wasn't a good idea to go. I mean, I'm I'm happy to talk about it, you know, but I I don't want to bring. I wanted to say good things about it if I could. And um, I think really if, if 
Ted Levine has a lot of really funny dialogue and he's a weird sounding guy. So between that and the gore, you can sit through it, but it's nonsense. You know, that's about all I could say. Yeah, it's complete nonsense. And and the thing is, I've seen Ted Levine in other movies where he's not using that really weird voice. Do you think they, they wanted to push the whole Buffalo Bill thing in this? I mean, I don't understand why everyone is just like dialed to 12 in that movie. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it. a lot of my favorite movies, people are like that. You know, I dig it. But uh, that was maybe that was sort of, you know, that was a choice. That was something that they asked him for. You know, I have no clue, really. I mean, it's the big mystery is not in the movie. It's the production itself. I would love to see a documentary and how that got made. Yeah, because, I mean, he has commentaries on basically all his movies except this one. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't on Blu-ray anywhere, is it? No, uh, well, there's like a, a German release or something. They did like a real, like a special edition uh, uh, Blu-ray in some other country, but uh, not here. Mm. Well, don't hold your breath, folks. Um, I don't see anybody rushing out to go get the Mangler unless it's in one of those 50 movie packs. That's the only time anyone's ever going to buy this gimmick. So we're going to move on to, oh boy, the second Mangler film, Mangler 2, Graduation Day, made in 2002. Fellow staff and students of the Royal Collegiate College, a brand new high tech computer security system, the N2K. What about the security risk of me escaping from this prison? The school is now equipped with an array of sensors and cameras. It's all about Big Brother. I'm so scared. We all need a Big Brother's protection now and then. The Mangler virus. Oh, Mangler, you're my hero. Mangler virus download. All of us. Thank you. Something strange is going on. Come here. Lay it on me. Crash the system. No, it's a trap! Now, Mangler 2, subtitle Graduation Day, is a Canadian gimmick starring in uh, a very tiny role. He he got paid a day rate, filmed for a day, and then left. Lance Hendrickson is in this movie as a superintendent of a private school. And uh, the movie stars who Amanda called the cheeseburger Claire Danes <laughs> as an edgy hacker girl that downloads the Mangler virus off of a website for reasons at a private school run by a Hal style Dell computer that controls everything in the school. Uh, this is essentially a 1993 hacker movie with bootleg stabbing westward tunes made 13 years too late. And uh, it obviously took a cue off of the post scream Miramax dimension horror films in which it wanted to be edgy. It wanted to have a bunch of hip kids that were into hacking things for reasons. Who knows? I don't even know why, (laughs) why they do anything in this movie. And um, (laughs) it's, it's essentially a movie where people run around a building for an hour and 15 minutes while things kind of happen and people kind of die for no reasons whatsoever. Um, why anybody would download a virus from a website? I, I have no idea. Usually I, I, I was under the pre supposition that uh, viruses were things that people made. like coded themselves but i guess you know cheeseburger claire danes found a website where like a torrent site where she could download the mangler virus 
off of it and, <laughs> and infect the entire... I don't know where I'm going with this. All I know is this movie was really hard to get through. You're talking about one of these movies that obviously are part of a franchise in name only. It has no relation to the movie that came before it. There's no characters that are holding over from the first Mangler film. It is your, your typical private school horror film where everyone in the school for some reason vanishes and goes on a field trip and five or six people have to stay behind and then hijinks ensue. <laughs> hijinks. And by hijinks, I mean a weird French chef shows up <laughs> and smokes loads of cigarettes um, the entire movie. Uh, there's a point where a guy calls himself Jacques Blackstow while snorkeling in a school pool and tells someone to suck the crack of his black ass. I mean, yes. uh, there's, <laughs> there's some enjoyment we had, but for the vast majority of this, it is another one of these movies where people just wander around the hallways of an empty building for 90 minutes. And then there's a big payoff with your name actress who you obviously paid a day rate to be there and shoot half a day. So that's Mangler two uh, graduation day. Andrew, did this film feel like three hours long to you or what? I mean, this shit was like ambient, man. Like I tried, it took me a couple of days to watch it and I kept going like, I just cannot fucking stay awake on this one for some reason. I mean, it was really, uh, you know what I'm saying? It was really, really, really tedious. And what's crazy is, you know, it starts out like fine enough. Like the writing isn't bad. Like it is kind of funny, you know, like they, they, the dial, you could tell they're trying to make the dialogue funny and stuff. So I was like, Oh, maybe they're making a comedy, you know? Yeah. But shit, it just doesn't do anything. Like you don't get, I don't think anybody gets mangled. Number one, there's no mangling. Nope. There isn't a machine of any kind. There's no nothing. You know, because I start, and so my mind started to go off and I thought up a way better plot for Mangler too. <laughs> I was like yeah, thinking about, I like made up this whole better movie in my head while I'm watching it, you know, but you don't get, um, yeah, you don't, you don't get any, God, the, I think the the worst and a lot of the deaths are kind of off screen in there by people that just randomly show up in the movie. They're not even characters that are all of a sudden there'll be janitors or other random people in this school that yeah. you're never introduced to in complete throwaway scenes that end up being killed. Yeah, they're they're writing like five people because they have to kill the black. Guy. I think he, he makes it almost an hour, mm -hmm. but he gets like this, you know, he gets the most graphic death up to that point because i think another lady just gets sucked into some her hair gets caught in some thing but they only show the wig going into it and some blood on the wig like you know it's 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 pretty terrible yeah um but his death like he has this like you know full appliance on his face he gets like locked in a room because the virus is causing the security system to fight the people basically kill all the people and so um he gets trapped in a room and the sprinkler system runs hot water all over him and he's banging on the door and you're just like of course he's the first of these characters to die the black guy of course he dies but uh yeah you can tell he like looks really horrifying like his skin's melting off and stuff but you know he by far gets the most graphic death um, the one that they put some money in. I was like, well, if you're going to kill the black guy, give him a good, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he's not the guy who got crushed by the stairs in the dark. <laughs> 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 yeah. The only pro other prosthetic or there's maybe two other scenes in the entire movie where there's actual effects other than somebody tying a little string, an invisible st string of yarn to l a bunch of cables and dr like dragging them across the screen um, there. Uh, Lance Hendrickson at the end, ends up being basically turned into some dude that has a bunch of wires going into his head and all this other stuff. So there's one um, makeup job. And then the weird French chef is stuck in a freezer while he's attempting to have a, a cigarette and he walks oh, out of it. that was a pretty good effect. Yeah, yeah where he, he had like icicles coming off of his nose and other stuff. Yeah, he's like, if you ever want to have sex again, give me your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck man oh he is the only character even worthwhile <laughs> in this movie yeah, i mean this movie the writing in the in the plot is so glacial 
And it's so out of touch. Like the entire time I kept looking at Amanda saying these songs weren't even hip in the late nineties. Like why are they in 2002 still using bootleg stabbing Westward tunes? It didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And they were making out of date weakest link references. Oh, the worst dude, the worst of all. When we go to talk about, Lance Henriksen and what a low point this was in his career. We got to talk about what they made his ass say when he joked to that girl. It's got to be the worst moment in this movie, <laughs> which is really saying something in a film full of bad moments. Whew, but the music got worse and worse as it went. I'm like listening to the lyrics going like, wow, they're pretty literal with what's going on on screen. And he's like, I'm running through the hallway and like, Oh God. <laughs> I couldn't even, this isn't happening. I couldn't even pay attention. I mean, there was one song where I got the funk and the funk is in your face. I was just like, oh. and the funk was in your face constantly for like five minutes. That's all the that's the only hook they had. Oh, my God. They they bought this off of some dude's mixtape and in, in an alleyway uh, the day before they, they filmed this movie. I, I have a feeling um, there's also another weird reference to a Spice Girls song at one point. I mean, when did the Spice Girls go out of touch? That was in the late nineties, right? Uh well, it was it was it was gone by then. You know, Spice Girls are like mid, like ninety-five. I mean, rock and roll died in ninety-four. And so like uh yeah, ninety-five, ninety-six. By two thousand, yeah. I mean, it wasn't really you wanna just you wanna go for this now? You want to talk about Lance now? Yes. I mean, they they have him. Uh, he just really, he really hates being in this movie. Oh, you I mean, can tell. Just like, he is mortified to do this stuff. So he's sleepwalking through these lines, these scenes, and doing a couple of Lance things, getting a little intense. But we all know Lance Henriksen is like one of our greatest actors, and he can really do it if they pay him to do it. But he ain't a uh, mangler too. He ain't give it or whatever this was originally. He ain't giving him shit. So they try to do this um, by the end. The big confrontation is the the uh, the, the computers have mangled him, and um, they got him in this wannabe Cenobite Uncle Frank slash Angelica Houston from Captain EO thing to where all the wires are sort of puppeteering him in this room, and they're sticking out of his face, and you can really tell that they just glued it on. Yep, and oh, yeah. and um, they use all these you know effects on his voice and i swear to fuck if he was comfortable enough he would have just fallen asleep in this rig but uh she starts trying to bargain with him and talking about oh i'm gonna put this you know we're gonna have sex but sign of cybernetically or whatever i'm gonna make this like computer snowflake virus thing i'm gonna give you and she just makes it attractive like oh it'll make you be able to make life it's all garbage it's gobbledygook because none of it makes sense it none of it doesn't matter I almost shouldn't even say that. You can cut all that out. It doesn't make any, you know, you can cut out of the no, movie. No, no, that's, that's a hundred percent the truth. I mean, <laughs> they tried the, the, the weird thing about that is, is that she, the reason why she's trying to use sex on him at the end is because there's this weird uh, emotional scene with this weird piano tune where she confesses to this boy toy, this other guy in their group that Lance Henriksen had molested her at some point. Mm. So she's trying to mm. flip this, the script on him at the end. Yeah. So he goes, tell me what you want, what you really, really want deadpan. And you're going like, oh, okay, this is worse than you're the weakest link being on screen. That's just like, I ran it back. I'm going that who that's not a, that's not a part of the gag reel that's really in the script or Lance was going like, you know, honestly, dudes, I'm going to hang myself with this special effect when the crew leaves. (laughs) I wouldn't have blamed him. I'm just going to give this. I'm just going to say this because this is how low things have gotten. All right, Lance, it's not in the script, man. No one will think that's funny. Look, I'm Lance Hendrickson. I was talking about Fuck you. Just give me this. (laughs) (laughs) But, but to add insult to injury, after she does the, you know, Super Mario move on him and he flies into the, you know, he's on wire. So like, yeah, let's throw him around like Crouching Tiger. He hits the wall. And as he dies, he spits out milk 
Like he's like a callback to Bishop. Yeah. Can you imagine the conversation the director must have had with him? Hey man, you remember Aliens? Yes. <laughs> He said, it's going to be in my just, obituary. You no, know, yes. when he said when you say it like that, he's just barely looking up to look at this guy in order to spit this out to him. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> he's like, yes, it will be in my obituary, which will be published later this week. That I was because I'll kill myself on your set. Yeah, that's right. So we got a little half and half, you know, on the on the crap services table. You want to just for shits and giggles spit it out when you die, like like Bishop, you know, like Bishop Mayor when you're Bishop. <laughs> Fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's fucked, man. It really, you know, whoa, right? Oh, Lance, I wonder if, like, if you mentioned this at a convention, if he would punch you. Oh, it's it's got to be one of those things because I don't particularly see Lance Hendrickson having like a sense of humor about this. I don't Ah. know. No, no, he'd flip that table over, man. Oh my God! This, this, to me, this movie felt like it was it was one of those movies that were made in the mid to late nineties and then just shelved for a very long time until some Joker yeah. paid fifty cents for the licensing rights and slapped the mangler on it. It didn't make it was so out of touch. It just it, it baffles my mind, and it's so like you said, it's extremely tedious to sit through. Because at first you're kind of like, okay, well, this this seems like, you know, a pretty nondescript teenage horror film, you know, and it yeah. wasn't necessarily awful at that point. It was cliche and, and trite, but because nothing and I mean, fucking nothing happens in this movie for a good 70 percent of it. Other than weird, random, strange things that just pop up like there's a dude watching a porno VHS on his computer somehow. I don't know how that's possible, but he he is watching a VHS on his computer. Um, That happens. (laughs) I I, 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 I like literally it broke my brain. I didn't know. Well, you know, I I will see this man about, about this about this movie. I, I like the Mangler. I would say don't watch it. But if you're gonna watch the Mangler too, what's a trip about this movie is seeing all the old computers and all the old oh, websites yes, and stuff. Yes, it's that is what's funny. Some of the dialogue's funny. Most of it would just make you 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 just not want to live anymore. But the the old computer stuff and the internet talk and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? And it talks about that is funny. And there's I think at the end the tag is. There's like a palm pilot, right? Yeah. Laying there next to her and it says, You're mangled. <laughs> you know, that's not good at all, but still, <laughs> it's funny it's looking at old technology, you know? I and, think that just, is literally the only way you can look at this and ha- find any enjoyment is because you, you and I lived through this. We've seen oh, yeah, evolution. Yeah. I think kids now would look at that and just go, This is the dumbest fucking shit I've ever seen. But for us to look back, and remember what it was like to be there and see this technology. There is something not only inherently stupid about how they treat it, but also nostalgic where you look at it and go, well, that's kind of goofy. And I remember when I had that. So there's that weird nostalgia that's there. Yeah. Yeah. And it plus, you know, like there's, <laughs> there's like uh, whenever it shows a screen of something happening, you know, like a file being downloaded or whatever, it's super literal across the screen and 90 times bigger than yeah. it would normally be. Totally. <laughs> I just, I tripped out on that. Like I, you know, cause I don't want to be all down on every movie. So I want to find some enjoyment in it, something to like, you know what I mean? Some way to like sit through it. Cause otherwise I'm going, what am I doing with my life? You know, Derek, you're my friend. I like you and stuff, but you know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't want to like mistreat me. But well, I wanted, I wanted to, I watched these because I was hoping I was going to find some enjoyment in them. Yeah. Obviously I, I, I don't want to <laughs> sit and watch 16 new witchcraft movies. I don't want to ever right. do that again. <laughs> No, nah, no. Nah. And, you know, I, I but that was the thing for me. I just had to find some some type of way to to, to uh, some something to, to enjoy inside of it. And that was really what I thought was funny. And I like any time the low budget really tells on itself. Like there's a scene where 
a car drives through a fence and they cut it trauma style like 16 times. <laughs> they show that yeah. crash. Pow, 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 pow. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, I know, man. I know. So uh, the the enjoyment you get from watching any super low budget movie is the, the ways that they kind of cut corners and do try. And I would say Mangler 2, it does try. You know, I, I don't I don't think they went in there thinking this is just some garbage and we're going to just like rip people off. Right. Somebody somewhere really was trying to make a good movie there. So I, I can't completely write it off. Did it make you fall asleep? Yeah. Is it a good Mangler sequel? No. Could I have written a better one? I did. In my, <laughs> While in my you were head, watching it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want to hear my Mangler 2 plot? Yes, I would love to hear I this. Think, I think I remember some of it. It's like it, it picks up directly after that first one. And the woman who, um, the niece of Gartley, who now is the the proprietor of the factory or whatever, they uh, s- some s- the some of the the virgins in the town because they're afraid of being sacrificed, they group together and do this like black magic spell, but it goes wrong and it resurrects the zombies of all the other virgins that were sacrificed. So it's like the remaining virgins of the town battle these like old mangled zombie virgins and stuff. That would be the greatest movie ever. <laughs> I mean, it would be it would be better than Mangler One and Two. Well, that doesn't that doesn't take much at all. No, I got some toenails in my jacket pocket. I found this better than them, but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, it, it it's 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 I I just I do think that these guys were sincerely trying to do a good movie. Like, I don't think they're trying to be bad mm-hmm. or just didn't care. This probably was you know somebody's idea of good. That they stuck the mangler, what was it the mangler virus? The mangler virus, <laughs> virus oasis. It's well, this it's obvious, and I I know I've said this already a couple of times. This feels like a movie that somebody made and it sat on the shelf for a long time, and until somebody came across, got the rights to the movie, in the rights to the mangler. They decided, okay, this is the only way that we can market this because they talk about the mangler inside of it. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. It feels like that. And one of the weirdest things about this movie is that it was obviously shot on film, but it definitely appears to have been digitized and then posted digitally, like caught with digital effects. There's Hmm. so many weird crossfades that happen through this entire movie non-stop crossfading that I was having fucking flashbacks to the boarding house director's cut. It was just it. I, I just got I, I kept yelling at the screen. Stop crossfading. Don't do it anymore. Well, no, but that supports your theory that it was shot like way before it was maybe even cut together. Right. I, that's what I'm wondering. I, I'd love to hear. I would love to see somebody take the reins and do a Crystal Lake memory style retrospective on these just so I can hear the <laughs> stories of how these fucking movies were made because it blows my mind. Like the decision process alone of like, you know what? Let's make a movie from The Mangler and let's get Toby Hooper to direct it and let's have it star Robert England in fucking Ted Levine. And then the decision, yeah. let's make a sequel to that about a computer virus and get Lance Henriksen in this movie. Like, yeah, no, I'm fascinated with the how things and why of things that I don't really like at all. Like I have, I'm not a fan of the Rob Zombie Halloweens, but I have the both of the Blu-ray because I could not wait to hear the commentary and watch the making and find out what you know, why, how, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like what was the reason why? And I can't even tell you how many movies I didn't like where I rented them just to listen to the commentary track. Um, I own the Batman versus Superman Blu-ray, you know, I am f- super fascinated by uh, all of that stuff. And like, I guess the room is a great example. It's a garbage movie, but that book, the disaster art is fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I can't I wait to see that movie. This week. Fascination. It, you know, it, it looks, it looks great. And and uh, unlike the fans of the room, I don't believe it's coming from a, a broy place at all. Um, I could be wrong, but the book wasn't like that. So I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, very- I'm afraid because all of the like the promotional things that are happening with it. Tommy Wiseau seems very skittish about it, justifiably so. I'm sure through yeah. the years of him 
and here we're going off on a tangent, not about the Mangler, but well, it's, 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 it's this is far more interesting than any talk about the Mangler. But Tommy Wiseau seems very skittish about it. And the way that James Franco is kind of handling himself in a lot of these kind of like promotional things is kind of been turning me off. So I'm a li- I haven't watched them. I well, I saw like I forgot where it it publicly screened first, and they had um, an after movie Q and A with James Franco, his brother, and Seth Rogen, and they were up on stage, and they brought Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero up there, and Sestero and Wiseau looked very uncomfortable on stage, and the rest of them fed off of the energy of the crowd, kind of goofing. And that's what worries me is that this is just in the last trailer I saw before Lady Bird the other day. It looked like it was a goof more than it was anything. It might be, you know, but, uh, you know, I loved um, Best Worst Movie. Mm -hmm. There's a good example, that documentary. So I I just I I don't have any love for stuff that's made bad on purpose. Like uh, we've we've talked about Birdemic, you know, many times and my feelings about that. But uh, Mangler, too. Um, I, I do think they were, I do think they were trying. They were, it just, you know, they didn't have the money and, you know, whoever put it together, whatever. And no, it doesn't work. And no, it's not good, but uh, I don't think it's bad on purpose. And I think being bad on purpose is worse. Yeah. I would say the first one feels way more like a movie that's intentionally trying to be camp than either of the oh, sequels. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So number two, I think we can both safely say, don't watch it. Not a good movie way. Would you think, do you think this one's worse than the first one? Or do you think the first one's worse? Um, one has the gore, which is gives it points, but two has better female has actual female characters in it. Mm-hmm. Female leads. And with me, man, that gives an edge. I'm sorry. Mm. I, I can, I can forgive the, the cheesy off screen kills. I can forgive the bad music or whatever, but, um, and, but, but they, they just, they have actual female characters, which really, you know, when you make a sequel, you want to improve on the original if you can. And given the fact they had no money, all they had to do was write some decent women in there and they did. So I actually, as bad as it sounds, I prefer it. I will give you that. I will give you that. My my problem is the first one, because it's so inherently goofy and surreal, kept me interested where this like my mind and my hand kept gravitating to my phone the entire movie. <laughs> You're not supposed to have your phone near you when you watch it. That's how I was taking notes. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, okay. yeah. I have my I have my uh, iPhone's note thing up and that's how I was taking notes but at the same time it was like as I was watching it I kept wanting to read and find out things of like how did this get who thought this was a good idea and how did this get made because I couldn't oh. I just scratched my head the whole time like did, I gotta find an interview like there's gotta be something that and I had I haven't found anything I, I I've come no, up and I had the I had the chance to interview Lance Henriksen last year for a film he did called it was a it was the number, and he was a proprietor of some hotel or bed and breakfast or something like that. And I was like, God, I would love to talk to Lance, but I was like, this movie's awful. Oh, <laughs> like, I'm not gonna know it's not gonna be fun talking to him about this, so I didn't take the opportunity. And uh, it's a good thing that um, God, if I could talk to him tomorrow, I, I would not be able to control myself from asking him about Megalur 2 and then he would this interview is over yeah, yeah, exactly. you him. just hear a dial tone yeah. like immediately so like Lance if I could tell you what I want what I really <laughs> really want it would be like <laughs> <laughs> oh and there folks uh, we're going to finish this up tonight and move on to the movie everyone asked for the 2005 trilogy ender mangler reborn at 666 maple drive visitors are always welcome but they never leave alive We 
gotta help her. How are we gonna explain how we found her? We broke into this house. Get out of the house now. It's home! So made by the same production company that had made part two, Mangler Reborn, is an actual sequel to the original Mangler film. It ties in the possessed laundry press machine back into the series continuity. And this film concerns a plumber slash repairman who buys the parts of the disassembled Mangler from an auction then upstairs in his attic where he's been feverishly putting this thing together while he's been unemployed ends up getting caught inside of it and dies in it then mysteriously somehow comes back to life as a zombie but he looks perfectly okay and he comes back and starts going and breaking in people's houses or taking uh repairman jobs in bonking people over the head with uh, a rubber mallet and taking them back to the <laughs> mangler so he can feed it to the mangler and then drink their blood. And in the midst of this happening citywide, uh, Amy Mann, this actress that I don't know if uh, plastic surgery has rendered her face emotionless or what's going on. Uh, sleepwalks her <laughs> way through a role where she loses her job and boyfriend on the same day, then gets kidnapped by the plumber. And why? And, and then for the name of the movie, Reggie Bannister playing uh, some kind of breaking and entry thief gets stuck inside of this man's kill house. And uh, everybody just kind of runs around three or four rooms for 80 minutes of this movie. And um, then it just ends. So, uh, Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> the Mangler Reborn, we finally get back to the horror roots, quote unquote, the horror roots. I mean, all of these are horror movies, but in varying degrees, Mangler Reborn of all of them, I, I feel actually attempts to make a straight laced gritty horror film it has unfortunately at 2005 it has that really greenish saw type look i don't think saw came out for another couple of years but it it has that very specific look to low budget that started happening around 2005 to 2010 and um it makes a real concerted effort to strip away any comedy that's in any of this and make a really dark gritty horror film there's a lot of gore on display but then of course in signature no budget style it's a movie where people walk around a house for 80 minutes um part two had a lot of nothing going on part three holy shit that 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 takes that whole concept to another fucking level andrew how many times did it take you to watch this one or were you able to watch it in one sitting? I got to say, homie, um, this one I, I was able, I was into the whole time. Like weirdly enough, man, like I did it. I, I, I liked it <laughs> <laughs> not to jump again and tell you, but uh, it's not that I don't, I don't totally agree with you about the low budget trappings and all that stuff. But um, I actually was fine. Like I, you know, there's that like five minute conversation Reggie Bannister has with his son before he goes into the, you know, so there are things that like clearly are done to take up like extra time. Sure. 
you know, like there's the, the bricked up windows. Every character that comes downstairs has to go, oh, shit, the window. You know what <laughs> or I mean? they try to get to the, <laughs> why is there no s- handle on this fucking door? Every one of Everybody them. does it. Everybody does it. And they open every window to see the, all the bricks. And you're like, well, we know, but now we got to watch you know. So that's the opposite of suspense, isn't it? Yes. But I, um, I, I did think it had, it, it held a decent tension for the most part, but I just was very happy that it actually took a uh, part of the mangler, uh, from the original film and concerned it into the plot in a very like believable way. This guy is trying to restore it from the pieces that he got as an antique. And I was like, well, that's pretty great. Like you could see somebody doing that. And, um, it, gets better as it goes in terms of filmmaking at the beginning i was like this sucks because the acting was really wooden and it was cheap and dumb and in a house but um you got gore and nudity in the first 10 minutes which there's no nudity in any of the movies up to this point no and so it's checking the boxes for you know direct to video exploitation movie for sure Um, there's a lot of ridiculous things in it and you know, it does, it does, I I agree with you. It does get kind of tedious and whatnot, but nowhere I think, um, in, in, in the neighborhood of the way part two does, because, um, you have less people, a smaller setting and a plot that isn't as shitty. I will agree with this. I, this was my favorite of the three movies. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah, while I while I was complaining that nothing happened for the first three quarters of this movie, it had me. It's a very short movie. I mean, it, I think yes. it clocks in under 80 minutes. Um, Probably. Yes. It just I think it, it's held together by mostly because the guy who is this killer is genuinely creepy in this movie. The mm-hmm. way he's asked to portray this, the way he the the way some of the house looks with blood covered all over. I don't know how Reggie Bannister when he walked in this place didn't see blood covering all the walls, but he didn't. Maybe he has horrible peripheral vision. I I have no idea. Maybe his character from the million and a half cigarettes he he lights while he's hanging out with his son. Um maybe just like that affected his sight. I have no idea, but <laughs> that was a big thing that bothered me and I kept telling Amanda it's like why in all of these fucking movies do these characters light a cigarette take one puff throw it away then immediately grab another cigarette light it up take one puff talk throw it away then grab another. he kept doing that hey, hey, but, but check this out though like the day after I watch this I mean I get out the car in the CVS parking lot or Walgreens or something and there is a pile of cigarette butts in the par- right in the next parking space next to where the door would be. And I was like, oh, shit, Reggie Bannister. <laughs> Reggie Bannister's here. here. <laughs> that poor son of a bitch. <laughs> it was like somebody did that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he know cigarettes are fucking expensive? Look at all that. What a way. It calms my nerves. <laughs> but but seriously, other than the these weird things, there there was tension at the beginning. I think like you had said, because through uh, repetition and redundancy through the movie, it just keeps going over the same things over and over again by near the end where people we actually see the mangler start to do things. It loses me. It it, it totally lost me because it I was amazed that it actually tried to make a serious horror film. I yeah. was really shocked because the other two definitely weren't and it had boobs. Um, it had a couple good actors, so it had a lot going for it. But unfortunately, there's just not really a lot to hold on to. I think it would have been a better 60 minute movie than an 80 minute movie. Yeah, so I, I mean, there's not really a whole hell of a lot to talk about with this one because it's pretty damn simple and a lot there's nothing that really goes on other than a couple people are locked up in a house and a guy it's one of these movies where it's like where is he now is he gonna get me oh this door's locked um i am a i'm a guy who is a professional lock picker and for some reason i forget about how to pick locks the moment i get into this house i i mean (laughs) <laughs> no it, it was silly man and the rubber mallet was really stupid he bonks everybody with this right you know like come on man and he's dragging people up and down the stairs and like he just doesn't look this strong and but there's i just there's there's great stuff i like i think the acting was better in this than any of the other ones i really do and um jeff burr 
is is got a cameo as a guy yep. mowing the lawn. It's like the it's almost like like Mangler Two. You could say was more like a, the lawnmower man than like the Mangler, mm-hmm. you know, in a way because of its story. Oh. But like in three, there's like two lawnmower references. There's a part where the guy, the plumber is seen repairing a lawnmower. And then Jeff Burr, if you guys don't know who that is, the director of Texas Chainsaw three and an awesome guy who totally lives in Georgia. Um, but he's, yeah, he's, he's just cut out cutting his lawn and he pulls a bagel out of his pocket and he eats it. like Jeff Burr. <laughs> oh man. But I'm nobody really sees this guy. <laughs> Jeff Burr doesn't yeah, even see this guy with this woman totally kicking and, and a, screaming <laughs> in a big fucking bag getting tossed in the back of a bag. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it is, it is funny, you know, it's got excessive rubber mallet and the mangler when we finally see what it can do that he, the one that he's built, it's like the stabbier. It's just got these little <laughs> kitchen knives and it just stabby, stabby, stabs you. And scissors and <laughs> but stuff like that. <laughs> you, you would never believe this thing could suck a real person into nope. it. It looks like you could just like breathe on it. It would fucking fall apart. Yeah, totally. But I also didn't believe the mangler in the first one could suck anybody in either. You know, even when they show that it's got a lockup bar and everything, you're going like, it just doesn't look like it could pull a human being with force it's designed to pull a, a sheet not a human body exactly you know so yeah there, you can't really get mad but what i what i thought was great and maybe what for me the ending really did it was that the reveal of this guy uses this machine to kind of like make people into sort of like the bullet, the Nutrisystem or whatever. He's drinking the blood and it's making his zombiness kind of stay at bay. That's a neat concept. But the best, his daughter shows up and he totally just whacks her with a board with nails it and throws her ass into the the stabby man. Not one fuck is given. Not one fuck. That chick is immediately just doused. His daughter, they make mention of her one time way in the beginning of the movie. Our daughter's coming to visit. Then don't say shit about it. And when she finally shows up, you're like, the daughter's here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 80 minutes ago, they mentioned this. But like, <laughs> but it's revealed that um, the the woman who, es- who uh, escapes from him, at least, in the, you know, initially, she goes down the gore shoot yeah. into the basement where all the like gory pieces and leftovers are. That was pretty Toby Hooper, was it not? Totally. No? Totally. I mean, I, I, that is the best part of this movie is that it's dark. It goes to dark places. And the best part of this is how they handled the possession and zombie aspects and the gore aspects of this film. Cause that's what I love. I wish they would have explored it a little bit more. I love the idea he had to feed this machine. They explored it slightly in the original one. I think Robert England's character, the reason he looks like 400 year old uh, Colonel Sanders is because he's doing the same thing. He's doing the same yeah. thing that this guy in the Mangler Reborn is doing. He's feeding this machine. And then somehow, maybe in the first one, the energy was keeping him alive. That's why him and that that young girl that he was trying to that he had, you know, signed that contract to be, you know, bound to the mangler at some point in that movie and all that mumbo jumbo they're fucking talking about up in that room with Robert England when he's trying to have her toe fuck his neck. Um, yeah, I hate that part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, but that's what they were talking about is that there's a reason he had to feed this thing. These 16 year old virgins was because it was allowing it was granting him immortality. And yeah, and this dude, like he's improved on the model because now it'll just take anybody. It'll just take anybody. Maybe- and then he just has to drink this concoction out of a bowl. He, for some reason, he instead of just taking the mason jar and drinking it, he takes a spoon in a bowl and eats it like soup. Like soup, man, because <laughs> it's good food is why. You know that <laughs> makes a great meal. I thought that stuff was awesome. If they would have like explored that it, it, more. I think this movie could have would have I would have actually said, yeah, this was a pretty good movie, but because oh, it's but so you. redundant, it just unfortunately, <laughs> those are just like little snippets here and there throughout the movie. Yeah, no, nah, but it hey, you got to admit, buddy, this is better than the Mangler three would be expected to oh, be one thousand percent better than what I expected, especially after part two. And it, the, yeah. the, the, the fact that we even have a Mangler three is just unbelievable. <laughs> it's unfathomable. I mean, why 
Nobody asked for it. Nobody wanted it. I don't. Well, one was a bomb. <laughs> part one was a bomb. I just don't. Nobody get it. wanted to. <laughs> I remember oh, when I part two you. came out. I don't know if you remember. I remember when part two came out. The video store, it universally was held as one of the worst movies ever made for a long, mm, long time that. on the internet. No, I don't. I didn't have any awareness of it. I just remember looking at it, going like, "Wasn't part one? Didn't no one like it? Why is there a two? I'm not watching this." And that image of Lance on the front, that isn't even what he ends up looking nope. like. Nope. The cover and to this one is the best cover of the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per- uh, everything. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go on a limb. <laughs> okay, Mangler Three is the best Mangler movie. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, duh, shithead. <laughs> no, nah, no, dude. No, I'm just saying. I agree. I'm saying, you know, that was my takeaway. Was I was like, wow, this one's all right, and not because I just hated the other two so much. I've seen a lot of crap, and I've seen a lot of movies that just are like got a lot of padding in it. It's like you know, they may have people going up and down the stairs and in and out of the house or what or not or whatever, but it still it, it was it was fine. It didn't lose me. No. You know, and they have some genuine tension, which is not something that I felt the other ones ever managed to do either because they couldn't get the tone right or just because, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They were inept. They just had no sense of what the fuck they wanted to be. That was the thing in this movie. Who, the guy that took the the reins on this movie had a vision as yeah. stupid as that sounds. He did. And he actually made a horror film that made sense. The other two yeah, movies, that's, nope. That is the best way to put it, man. This is the only one that actually <laughs> legitimately, like, f- you know, it's like because you have the first one, which is, you know, a Frankenstein spliced together. You don't know whose movie or vision it really was, but it definitely doesn't translate to screen. And then two, it wasn't even going to be a Mangler movie. So three is the, <laughs> yeah, three was by default, definitely uh, the one that was the biggest success in terms of filmmaking. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. Um, does that mean I'm going to be telling people to rush out and go see Mangler three Mangler reborn? Fuck. No, no, it's still bad. (laughs) It's still not a great movie. I mean, in relation to the rest of what we have talked about tonight. Yes, it is the best of the three. I think better than average for a direct to video sequel. I'd have to say. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot worse out there. It just, it's no wrong turn six, but <laughs> what? Oh Jesus! I that's another no series that I have no. I'm shocked that that didn't get voted on for the franchise episodes. To be honest, I actually liked six. I actually liked six. I, I two's the best, but I, I actually dug six. Oh man, wrong turn. See, I'm kind of glad this year we're going to be doing American Ninja. I'm I'm kind of really glad <laughs> I don't have to trudge through perfect. some shitty horror franchise this year. That's true. <laughs> After the last couple, because I keep getting told, man, the, those other two uh, Puppet Master movies. I don't even want to think about those movies. Oh, no, I was I had no plan on fucking with the Puppet Master movies. No, with, in terms of horror franchises, you know me, man. I'm a Final Destination guy. Yeah. Um, but there's some big drop offs after that. You know, I like the Species series. But uh, no, I'm not a Mangler fan either. After nope, this, the, I have to say, Mangler series, we can we can rest assured that we're not going to be recommending this series of movies to anybody uh, to even talk about them. There's not a ton to talk about other than the fact that they're all really inept. They just aren't very good movies. Why we have a a franchise of these movies? It's unknown. I I truly believe if there was somebody out there that it could make a best worst movie uh, type documentary on how these got made. I would, th- I'd be there day one. I would be plunking down my hard earned money because I want to fucking know. I'm far more interested in the why than the actual movie. When you tweet this, the link to this man, you should try to at uh, some of the directors of two, like the director of two or the director of three. <laughs> See if you can find yeah. them. Yeah. I would love to, I would love to find out. I would love to. Obviously, the reason is money. 
It's got to be. The only reason is is recognition is that, oh, well, we have this license. Why don't we make this movie? It's got to be the only reason, because I can't imagine Mangler Reborn was made for any more than maybe fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, but I got a question for you, man. Now that we're talking about franchises and this may be a good kind of point to ponder, you know, at the end of something like this. You know, this was clearly um, the direct video sequel and the franchise of anything happening, I feel like was a purely for the video store phenomenon. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work in the era of streaming. Do we see it that often? I don't keep up with, you know, horror per se that much anymore. But like, are we seeing the direct to streaming sequels to stuff? Oh, yeah. I think the other day it was a perfect ex- example of that is that. Um, because we've been doing this turkey challenge um, in the 31 days group. It, I've been watching a lot of movies with Mark, the movie man. And the other night on Netflix, we watched this movie called American Poltergeist 2, which is another one of these movies that got um, picked up by some distributor and retitled. And I've noticed many many of these movies that come out now are franchised that are just disconnected movies just to have some sort of recognition. I don't know why it's okay in the no budget and low budget realm on streaming to try and tie these together, but I've been noticing it more and more like our, our buds that made um, Seder Ridge that got turned into the invoking that movie got turned in. There's like three or four of those now. Whoa, really? But, but they're all disconnected movies. They're not made by uh, those guys that made the original. They're like, it's like an anthology franchise. And I think that's kind wow. of like a lot of these paranormal movies. They're doing the same thing. And why these are becoming streaming franchises, I don't know. That's It's a really good question, Andrew, because I, it is happening. But is it okay. happening to where people like you and I are recognizing it and being pulled in? To watch these movies <laughs> that's I, I that's well, a, a bigger I, question is like what is the demographic <laughs> that's actually looking at these new f- streaming franchises and actually they're in them getting pulled in so that the companies can make those viewing dollars i don't know i don't know what the answer to that is well i could tell you this dude i have a friend who is a huge horror fan who watches horror basically strictly all the time every day and he and i have seen zero of the same movies so there is a horror fan who will just watch anything new and doesn't really care about old things and the people that crank this stuff out uh stay in business because of them they'll just watch whatever new scary movie there is to watch and they'll watch them all and I'm like, well, at one point in my life, was I that person? Well, I fucking went to the Mangler, didn't well, I? Well, <laughs> I think back in the day of the, the video stores and like in the past episodes, we have led on to that. You and I were actual video clerks way back in the day. Yes. So we yes. we were inundated with this stuff. We saw it. We were able to go and rent these for free and take them home. I did that a lot and I rented a lot of fucking trash as I'm sure you did. And (laughs) you watched more of it than me, I think. (laughs) Okay. I I probably did. Um, (laughs) I'll admit to that, but, but or different trash. Well, I, I, at that time I wasn't getting pulled into like, I had never seen these movies. So it, to me, it's always shocking that some of these movies would subsequently like spawn these huge franchises when the first movie didn't appeal to me. Who's who are these movies appealing to and how are they making their money back it, They're Obviously, it's based on that that um, new release wall mentality like you had just mm-hmm, kind of exactly. said where it's just like, you know yeah. what? Anything that's new, I'm just going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, it's why the video store model had to go under because you just have this inventory that is basically useless. Well, how does that work now? Because there's so much, there's so much volume. How do you make money on franchises that have no name 
recognition. Like, let's take, for example, what I had said before, American poltergeist. Do you fucking know what that is? Mm -hmm. No, but my friend like has seen them all. You know what I'm saying? There are people who will watch anything as long as it is new. They will watch anything. Ugh, I just the, I, the, what they won't do is dig into old movies, you know, because you remember what it was like working at that store, man. You had to go dust off those movies in the middle of the store that was old. You know, how often did somebody come in and go, hey, do you have this movie? When it came to horror, only around Halloween time was somebody wanting to watch an old horror movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Most of all, they just they just want to see the new the new thing, and there's way more of it now than there was oh, then too. Jesus so Christ, man! That's how that's how they thrive just by being new and any sort of recognition. You know, it's like cranberry Red Bull, lemon lime. You know, what I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look what Mountain Dew had to do to be relevant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, constant, constant rebirth, constant. Yeah. 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 Well, that is legitimately the only way we got three Mangler films. It's the only way we get any of these franchises is that somebody out there is plunking down their money or to nowadays taking the time to actually click and watch this stuff. So um, I guess we have them to thank for <laughs> the movies we watched tonight because, man, I would have never chosen to watch these back in the day and I didn't. And now I kind of wish I hadn't watched them. <laughs> this time well yeah because i mean a normal person you know goes to the store and sees ultra ranch dorito ultra ranch dorito the fuck is gonna eat this (laughs) (laughs) extreme ranch (laughs) (laughs) but it would not be on that shelf if motherfuckers weren't, yeah, Ultra Ranch. <laughs> Give me that extreme ranch. I need it. <laughs> that old cool ranch, you could just burn that shit. <laughs> does, it, does it have caffeine in it? I'll eat it. <laughs> I don't want, I only want jacked cool ranch. <laughs> is that what makes it jacked? Is because they put somehow sprinkled caffeine on, on, the, on the chips? You just, that's why we're not in that business, man. It's all about fucking being that, that next shit. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing, you know, the funny thing, and we're going on a a far tangent here way off is that half of that stuff is just other things that never sold. So they repackage and put some new title on it. (laughs) Oh yeah. 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 Some accidents and shit. Oh my God. So anyways, there you have it. Listeners. Mangler one, two, and three, the movies nobody on earth asked for. But of course, here at Astro Radio Z, we watch for your enjoyment and our displeasure. So that's it for this week's episode. Folks, Andrew, as always, it's such a pleasure to have you on my fine radio program. Thank you for watching these movies, even though you didn't like any of them. (laughs) <laughs> hey thanks for having me man blur <laughs> well i'll try not to give you the mangler virus on your computer with this episode so um this is the portion of the show where my guest shamelessly shills the fuck out of you so mr andrew shearer please chill hey man um i got a movie on um amazon on demand call or amazon prime now uh called space boobs in space and uh a lot of one star reviews will be quite honest with you saying, oh, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. And I'm just like, you give me life by saying that. It's bullshit. You know oh, no, man. I like, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by people like people like Ed Wood and Doris Wishman and a lot of the people that are just one star review type filmmakers, mm-hmm. you know. God, I I don't I'm not mad at it. I'm just I'm just really not. It's like you tell me I'm the worst. They're about to give an Oscar to people that made you know a movie about the people that made the worst movie. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't you not gonna hurt me if space boobs in space. Watch it. <laughs> I like the space boobs in space. I enjoy it. It sits on my shelf with all of the other Gonzarific catalog proudly. So I recommend Thanks, it. Buddy. Big time thumbs up. Go check out Andrew's stuff. You need to do that. So until next time, folks, which I think I'm doing an episode on Shokasugi movies with my good bud, Lee Marone. 
Hopefully I can drag his ass out of the dungeon in Oshkosh and get him up here so we can talk about ninjas with huge mustaches. That'll be next on Astro Radio Z. So, folks, go get mangled. You can find Astro Radio Z on iTunes. Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, YouTube, and anywhere podcasts are found. Please, help us by subscribing, rating the show, and giving us a review. It helps us get the show out to more listeners. Also, if you would like to hear more of the show and be a more active participant, Join the Astro Radio Z Facebook group and page, and join the Patreon. For only one dollar a month, you get bonus episodes. Thank you for listening. See you next week, Astro Zombies. Sacrifice to cleanse our